So what if you could create a GraphQL API declaratively based on an existing REST API? With steps in, you can import an existing REST API endpoint and regenerate a GraphQL schema for you. But sometimes you also need to make transformations to the output of your REST API endpoint. And at Steps we got you covered, as we offer several ways to transform and manipulate JSON data. And in this video, I'll show you how to use JQ, which is an open source library to manipulate JSON, to transform REST API endpoints declaratively into GraphQL. For this example, we'll be using an API that returns dummy product data. And to import this API, we need to install the steps in CLI, which I've already done. And you can easily install this by running npm install, append a global flag, and use steps in. So npm install, append a global flag, and write down steps in. This will install the steps in CLI that allows you to import any GraphQL API, REST API, or different databases. So using the CLI, we can run a command that's called steps and import curl, and we only need to define the API that we try to import. And the API in this case is the dummy JSON API that returns product data, as I just said. So this is the full command. We will be importing this endpoint. We append a different name to it, and we also define the query name to be products. And by running this command, Stepsend will send a request to this REST API endpoint, transform its output into GraphQL types, and also create a query that is called products to get this data out of your REST API into GraphQL. And a generated schema will look like this. As you can see, we have a query called products that's calling this endpoint. We have a root type, and we also have a products type. And just by running steps and start, this GraphQL schema will be deployed as a GraphQL API, and you can retrieve data from it using either the deployed endpoint or by taking or by going to the steps and dashboard. And the steps and dashboard is accessible at this URL. Before going to the steps and dashboard, let's have a look at the response of this query. As you can see, this query will send a request to this endpoint and return a object called root that contains a field called products, which has our product information. But what if you don't want to return the type root, but you only want to return the type products entry? So let's say we want to have this, where our query will return the products entry instead of root, and products entry would be an array. With GraphQL, there's no way to automatically manipulate or transform this JSON. But with Stepsend, you can use a field called transforms that is taking the endpoint's result and then transforming or manipulating it in a way that it fits whatever you set as the response type for this query. So let's see how this works. We need to add a new field called transforms to our REST connector. And this will take an array, meaning that you can have several uh, transforms. You should set a value for path pattern, which is an empty array in this scenario. And then we also need to set a value for editor. And with editor, this is where we will be inserting JQ. In here, we can use different ways of editing. You can also use JSONADA, but in this video, we'll focus on JQ. And to use JQ, you can just type down JQ here. And for example, we can say, we only want the field products to be returned. So instead of taking this bigger blob, we only take the field product. And as you can see from the steps in CLI, I made a small typo here. So transform should be transforms. And once I save this, the new GraphQL schema with this transformation will be deployed. And from the steps in dashboard, we would be able to uh, send a request to this API to see its response. From the steps and dashboard, we can send a request to get the products from the GraphQL API. And to do this, we can just start typing, our query is called products, and for example, we could get the ID, the title, and the category for all the products. Once I press run, 
you can see the response as a JSON and it's no longer the object that we saw before that also included information for pagination. Even though our REST API endpoint doesn't support filtering, we can use JQ to add filtering in it with GraphQL. For this, we will need to add some more, some more lines of code in here actually, where we're gonna get rid of this array definition and we're gonna say we will be mapping data. We are going to select the category, for example, and we're gonna say wherever category contains a certain field. So we can say category, we can write down contains. And here we can use a get to actually look for the value category. And we don't have this value for category just yet. Uh, so we will add that value right here. So inside our query, we will be adding a filter. And for that, we need to add this parameter that's called category, which will take a string value. And we will make this optional, so you're not obliged to actually use this category filter, and it should also run without. And then I believe I also need to make sure that we return an array. So what does this do? It will take the products field, it will then map over all its values, it will select the field category, and whenever this field category uh, contains the value of our parameter that we have for our query, it will add it to the array that will be returned. So if I save this and go back to my steps and dashboard, I should be able to filter based on category. In the steps and dashboard, I need to refresh my data so this new value becomes available. And this category, I, for example, can filter for uh, laptops. Once I press run, the GraphQL API will return only the data for the products that is actually laptops. And there are probably more categories from the top of my mind. I can also use smartphones and this should return smartphones only. Of course, there's much more you can do by combining JQ with StepSan to build GraphQL APIs for your REST endpoints. In the description of this video, you can find more information around using JQ. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button and subscribe to our channel. I hope to see you again in my next video.